Hello, I'm um, John Tomello. I'm Professor of Nanomaterials in the Department of Chemistry at Imperial College. In my group, we're interested in new methods and tools for making high quality electronic materials. I guess I'm really curious about, are there different ways of doing things that other people are trying to do? Things that maybe haven't been tried before. Um, electronics and pharmaceuticals are, are two industry sectors where there's a real need for very high performance specialty materials. The quantities needed aren't huge. I mean, we were typically talking about tens of kilograms, but what really matters are issues such as um, yield, quality, purity, performance. Chemistry has been very good at making very small quantities of high quality materials or large quantities of uh, commodity materials. What it's not been very good at is making significant quantities of very high grade materials. And that's really where our research comes in. For a number of years now, we've been looking at flow chemistry as a way of getting around these problems. And the general idea is we shrink down the size scale on which we perform the chemical reactions. And by doing that, we get much more control over the reaction conditions, which is what we need. But also the methods we're developing scale very well to larger volumes. And what we found over time is actually we've been able to make much higher quality material um, by switching to a flow environment than we ever could have hoped to have made with a batch reactor. Conventional chemistry is what we call batch chemistry, so we're carrying out chemical processing steps in relatively large vessels. The problem with that is um, we don't have a very large amount of control over the reaction conditions, so temperatures can fluctuate, mixing can be slow, and all of these can, things ultimately lead to worsened product quality. When we use algorithms, they make no presumptions about what the best conditions are, and they explore the full parameter space um, without bias. They gradually build up a picture of how the reaction conditions affect the product, and they learn where to explore to get the product with the very best properties. This is a really interesting time to be exploring these kinds of approaches because lots of things are happening at once. Computing power is improving every day. Um, we're developing new inline techniques that provide us with more information more quickly than has previously been possible. The result of this actually is that we can explore larger and larger parameter spaces more and more easily. When we talk about parameter space, what we're, what we're really talking about are the different reaction conditions we can access, so different temperatures, different reaction compositions, different reaction times. So imagine a situation where you, you look at 10 different temperatures and you look at 10 different reaction mixtures and you look at 10 different reaction times. We would consider that to be a parameter space of 1,000, 10 by 10 by 10. Um, that's okay and that will give you reasonable properties. But now imagine that you look at 100 different temperatures and 100 different reac reaction times and 100 different reagent compositions suddenly you're exploring a much larger parameter space, a million different points. It's very likely that within those a million points, there'll be a product that's much better than the one you would have found originally when you were only searching a thousand. When you can explore this kind of size of parameter space, you can only hope to find materials that are way better than anything we've ever been able to produce before. In fact, I mean, if you want to think more creatively or optimistically, you might even think about examples where you're, you're probing really fundamental questions like the origin of life, and you, you look at such a huge parameter space in search for reaction conditions that will actually generate the fundamental building blocks of life.